Shout it loud, hallelujah. As many people as are expecting the touch of God here this morning, let them shout this prayer loud and clear. I redeem my life from the cage of wasters. In the name of Jesus, redeem your life from the cage of wasters. I redeem my life from the cage of wasters. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this loud and clear. The encounter that will promote my life. This prayer is for so many people here today. Can you say this loud and clear? Locate me by fire. The encounter that will promote my life. Locate me by fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this again with only aggression. Every power closing the road of my opportunities can you say that with only anger make it louder than that beloved in the name of Jesus yes yes Every power closing the doors of my opportunity. Your time is up. In Jesus' name we pray. I fire back. Every arrow. Fired against my staff of bread. This prayer is also for so many people here this morning. Can I hear the sister saying it loud and clear? Brothers, say it louder than the sisters. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus, fire back the arrows. The arrows fired against my staff of bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fire it back. The arrows fired against my staff of bread. I fire them back in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, my life. Can you say that loud and clear? Receive the mandate to trample upon serpents and scorpions. This prayer is also for some people here this morning. My life, receive the mandate to trample upon serpents and scorpions in the name of Jesus. Let there be a mandate of the Holy Ghost delivered to your hands to trample upon every serpent and scorpion in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for bringing us here. We thank you because of what you do in our midst every day. We thank you for the life of so many people that are going to change this morning. And we thank you for the dumbfounding breakthroughs that you have packaged for your children. I pray, O oh Lord, that as many people as shall listen here this morning, that they will be located by the powers of heaven. In the name of Jesus. The spirit of the living God will arise and scatter every oppressor. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of understanding 
come upon your life now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. This morning, I'm going to be a little bit slow so that you can understand what we're talking about. If we don't finish these prayers today, we continue next Sunday. We're looking at what I call your destiny and evil visitors to the heavenlies. Your destiny and evil visitors to the heavenlies. Straight away, three things stand out. Destiny, evil visitors, heavenlies. Destiny, evil visitors, heavenlies. There are enemies and there are enemies. Enemies vary in wickedness and in level. I used to tell people that the enemy that steals your bed is a wicked enemy. But the ones that steals your sleep is a more wicked enemy. The enemy that steals your books is a wicked enemy. But the one that steals your brain is a more wicked enemy. Likewise, the enemy that steals your certificate it's a wicked enemy. But the ones that steal your destiny, it's a more wicked enemy. So if I ask you a question now, that who is your greatest enemy on earth? Your greatest enemy on earth is anything that does not allow you to fulfill your destiny. Anything. Whether power, personality, force, spirit, that cages you from achieving your divine destiny is your greatest enemy indeed. Because your destiny is God's purpose for your life. Your destiny is a divine agenda for your life. Your destiny is the reason why you were born. Your destiny is your purpose for living. Your destiny is what God has written in the book, in his book concerning you. Jesus said, the son of man goeth as it is written of him. Your destiny is what God had in mind before he said, let me create this person and send him here. That your destiny is the expectation of heavens for your life. If any power abuts that one, that is a wicked power indeed. I want you to understand. So know that when you are talking about destiny, it's a very serious matter. Heavenly is. The Bible talks about plural heavens. There is the highest heaven, which is the dwelling place and the throne of God. That's what the Bible calls heaven of heavens. The Bible talks about heaven of heavens. You find that in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14. That heaven of heavens, which some people call highest heaven. Some people call it third heaven is the dwelling place and the throne of God. Then there is a second heaven again, which is the dwelling place of spirits. The Bible talks about spiritual wickedness in the high places. Then there is the first heaven, which all of us can see when we lift up our eyes. Where you find the stars, the sun, the moon, and other cosmic bodies. So, the three of these is referred to as heavenlies. And God created them for a purpose. This is what we want to look at now and how it affects our destiny. When God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, it was to give light, to rule the day and the night. They were for signs and they were for seasons. So the heavens above our head exercise some controlling powers. But one factor about the heavens that is not clear to many people is that apart from the wickedness entrenched in the second heavens, the heavens have power to wage war against human beings. Judges chapter 5 verse 20. Judges 5 20. Judges 5 20 says this. They fought from heaven. The stars in their courses. They fought against Sisera. So the heavens can wage war. The heavens 
can cause trouble for men who live on earth. That's why Psalm 121 verse 6 says, The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. Meaning that those things have powers to smite. Can you raise up your right hand to the heavens and say, The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. In the name of Jesus. Say it three times. But then, right from the beginning of the world, God knew that men will soon find out that there is, there is power above them. And men found out. So men began to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they began to offer sacrifices to them. The worship of the sun started in Babylon. God viewed the worship of heavenly bodies so seriously that if, if they catch you watching heavens or worshiping heavens in those days, the penalty was death. People have been known to love these heavenly bodies. They serve them. They acquire from them. They sacrifice to them. They dedicate properties and things to them. Sorcerers, children of the devil, can interfere with the sun, the moon, and stars around a person's life. The moon and the sun, if you look at the world religions very well, they control the major religions in the world. There is some powers in the heavens. The heavens can exercise functions on dominion and determination of what happens here on earth. Look at Psalm 19 that we read this morning. Many things we don't understand, but the children of the devil understand them better. Psalm 19, look at verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. So the heavens, they speak, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech. That is, each day has a speech. And night unto night showeth knowledge. Meaning that each night has a certain knowledge to declare. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. These heavenly bodies, you see them all over the world. So once they are used against a person, you can run to anywhere in the world. As far as these heavenly elements are there, you are still in trouble. Four. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words, the words of those heavenly bodies to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices as a strong man to run a race. The sun is personified as having a character and giving the nature of a strong man and a bridegroom. Everyone on the surface of the earth of their own share of the heavenlies. Originally, if we read Psalm 8, the Bible says he has put all things under his feet. Man originally had the mandate to control these heavenly bodies until Adam fell. But right now, the children of the devil have found a way again to key themselves into the heavenlies in order to destroy lives. You could ask questions and many, many questions. Why is it, for example, that the moon regulates tides, floods, agriculture, and all kinds of other things. Why is it that the moon affects the activities of animals? Why is it that during the full moon, all kinds of strange things begin to happen? The moon affects the sanity of people. And it is known that during full moon, there is a lot of witchcraft activities, there is a lot of violence. Why is it that in many religions of the world, the worship of the elements of heaven is clearly pronounced? Why is it that when you look at the map of the world, those areas where the gospel is finding so difficult to penetrate, they are the areas where people worship the sun, the moon, and elements more, or pray to the heavens? Why is it that people sometimes watch the position of the sun, moon, and stars before they can make their sacrifice, before they can hold their festival? Why are they watching those things? Why is it that many people are interested in astrology, horoscopes, what their stars say? Why do you think many nations have the picture of the sun, the moon, and the stars on their flags? Why is it that there are some religions, the mark of the religion is half moon or quarter moon? Why is it? Why is it that there are some cultures when babies are born, before they name them or dedicate them, 
part of the ceremony is to lay the child naked on the ground early in the morning facing the sun there are powers in the heavens and men have learned how to move therein likewise beloved the sun and moon can bring blessings into your life if you know what to do Deuteronomy chapter 33 Deuteronomy 33 verse 13 Deuteronomy 33 13 and of Joseph he said blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious things of heaven for the dew and for the deep that cultured beneath and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun and for the precious things put forth by the moon the sun and the moon can bring blessings into a person's life but then there are certain records in the heavens stored by strong men ancient priests from our ancestral roots they know that the sun can smite by day and the moon by night what i'm saying now may look like stories to some of you but i'm telling you now that satanists use satanic intelligence to tap into the moon the sun and the stars and they plan to destroy people's lives i'm telling you now that the very very wicked ones they have learned how to hijack the ordinances of heaven and then use it to oppress and afflict people at will wicked men have get crashed into these heavenly bodies under the tutelage and school of the devil and they are using it to wreck havoc what am i trying to tell you this morning the heavenly is like a broadcasting station a broadcasting station can be used to disseminate good news but a broadcasting station in the hands of the enemy can be used to destroy why do you think the bible is so much against the queen of heaven and why is it that this queen of heaven in every nation you go it has names local names god so much hated the worship of the queen of heaven he told jeremiah that these people worship the queen of heaven don't pray to me about them i will not answer look at jeremiah chapter 7 these things are very clear to people who understand spiritual warfare there are so many people who don't know what is going on in their lives this will give you an explanation this morning jeremiah chapter 7 from verse 16 say therefore pray not down for these people neither lift up crying or prayer for them neither make intercession to me for i will not hear thee says thou not what they do in the cities of judah and the cities of jerusalem the children gather wood the fathers kindle the fire and the women net their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger all these ritual parties that we hold for children and they cook beans, they fry bean cakes, they buy all kinds of things. The Bible says they are doing it to the queen of heaven. And God hated the worship of that queen of heaven. Even in the Bible, there are men of God who understood that the ultimate power is to contact the heavens. By the time Moses caused darkness in Egypt, it prevented the magicians of Pharaoh from contacting the heavens. Moses understood the power of the heavens. By the time Elijah was going to bring the nation of Israel down to their knees, he contacted the heavens, locked up the place, put the key in his pocket. By the time prophetess Deborah began to address the stars, Sarah was already in trouble. By the time Joshua spoke to the sun, the moon, to stop, they had no option but to stop. These ancient men understood the principles. But it is we that we don't understand sometimes what we are doing. Why do men visit the evilness? Number one is to see into people's future in order to disrupt it. To see into people's future in order to disrupt it. Number two is to waste destinies. Wastage of destinies. And this is a very terrible matter. The other time they program something to the heavens against a sister i have never seen a thing like this in my life the husband went to work that morning kissed her and said see you later after the husband had gone to work this woman took her two children went to that bridge that crosses from Ido to lagos she took the first boy off about four years old threw him into the lagoon 
When somebody saw her lifting up a child and throwing the child into the lagoon, she screamed and ran towards her. But before the person could get there, she dropped the second child. And before they could get to her, she herself had climbed, jumped inside. Her husband came home to find that the whole family was gone. Close your eyes, blood. Every agenda of the wicked will waste my life. In the name of Jesus, command the agenda to be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Now, for a person who is not mad, never gone for any treatment of insanity, he just woke up suddenly and snuffed out the old family. It was later we knew that wickedness have visited the heavenlies against her to waste her. The third reason men visit the heavenlies is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. The fourth reason why men visit the heavenlies is to afflict fellow human beings and to influence communities. Many, many politicians, I'm saying this without apology to any of them, there are men and women who are deep into the occult and whose contact the evil is. Many of them. That's why believers cannot sit down and allow them to take over everywhere because they will pollute the evil is with their incantation and everything and there will be trouble. Number five. Men visit the evil is in order to manipulate wealth from the evil is and obtain supplies. There is tremendous wealth in the evil is men manipulate it and steal from fellow human beings and take it away in fact the key to stealing people's virtue is stored in the second heavens number six reason is to obtain protection some are afraid that they will die so they contact the evilness in order to obtain power seventh reason is to shoot down promising stars every man has a star in the evilness just like Jesus had a star. And that star can be shot down. Shot down. This is a very serious thing. The eighth reason why men visit the heaven is, is to obtain strength and political power. Because with the powers of the heaven is, they can control anybody. These are the reasons why men visit the heaven. Is. But the key matter is that right there in the heaven is, all men are naked. All spiritual deposits in men are clear like glass. And they know who will prosper. They know who will do well. They know who is a walking gold mine. And they plan their strategy to steal from them. This is why this morning's prayer. There is no way you will pray it. And things will not happen. When evil visitors have consulted the heavenlies against you. There are some simple, simple things you may begin to notice. Number one is unpardonable, irreparable errors. Unpardonable errors. Now that thing that happened in Kenya, this woman had six children. The one day, she discovered that the husband had a strange woman. She was mad with rage. What did she do? She just prepared food and put poison inside and fed it to all the six children. By the time the man came back from work, all his children were gone. How will the man start now? With a strange woman. Later, the woman who poisoned the children, her own children, got born again. She now began to regret. An evil command was given to her, and she carried it out. Unpardonable errors. Two, if evilness is being consulted against a person by evil visitors, you may begin to notice untreatable sicknesses sicknesses you cannot diagnose three there could be strange tragedies strange tragedies four there will be the grace to grass syndrome they just pull the person down five there will be acidic disfavor wherever the person goes there will be no favor it could go to anywhere in the world since all these elements are there, sun, moon, stars, they are there. 
And the Bible said their speech is gone out onto the ends of the world. There is no way you can go where you can fill them. Six. There will be a mark of near death accidents. Accident that the person will be close to death. You will be seen dead in your face. You could be in a vehicle. Accident could occur. Everyone will die. will be the only one who will walk out. And that will be consistent. It's a plan from the wickedness in the heavenlies. Seven, the person will begin to find easy things very difficult. Exams that people pass with is just finds it difficult to pass it. Eight, is sudden, premature, and unnatural death. Once it has been programmed against the person, the evil is. Nine, is that they will turn helpers against the person. Help just refuses to come. Is a program from the evil is. Ten, there will be stubborn, iron like oppression. Twenty deliverance, fifteen deliverance, yet the problem remains the same. Because an indication that the forces you are facing, they are not the come out, come out, come out type. No. No, they are there. Eleven, there will be problems defying normal prayers will be happening to the person. This is the normal prayer we pray. You pray from your book. You go for deliverance. We come to church. That thing will just defy all those prayers. And you'll be wondering whether you're not praying. Twelve. They will cause a person to feel like a fish out of water. Thirteen. They sponsor consistent witchcraft attacks. Consistent witchcraft attacks is being sponsored by visitors to the heavenly. I mean, for somebody to sit a person down, you sit down. You take this bomb, attach it to your body. You are going to kill yourself and kill others. Then you make heaven. And the person who is training you did not put the bomb in his own body. But he had programmed you to go and do it. Those are powers from the heaven. I want you to understand these things. That's why I've been trying to explain to you. That those areas where the gospel is so hard to penetrate. There are zones, geographical zones. Those desert areas, they contact the heavenlies. And um, gospel in those areas is so difficult to penetrate. Unfortunately, many of us don't even know this kind of prayers. We don't pray it. Many of us Christians who should come together, plan a prayer program and pull down these things. We are not even united to do it. Praise the Lord. 14. Unbelievable conspiracy. It's a sign of wickedness from the heaven. 15. All round rejection. Marriage rejection. Everywhere rejection. It's all wickedness of the heavenly. Sin. When all roads are consistently blocked. Blocked. Try this way, no way. Try that way, no way. Try this way, no way. Three days dry. Seven days dry. And you find the situation remains as if you didn't fast, you didn't pray. Powers from the heaven. 17. Brain and mental attacks. These days now there is rise in brain attacks and mental trouble. The enemies have mastered the technique of making people insane. There was a meeting at a, a crusade at Moe yesterday close to Prayer City where they poured anointing on the head of a naked, a naked madman passing by the crusade. And to the amazement of those who poured the oil on him, he said, where are my clothes? Where am I here? I'm from Yola. What am I doing in Lagos? He started crying. So why is my pant? Why am I dirty? They had to quickly scrub him there and give him lock soap and bathe him. Then one member ran home and brought his best dress. Gave it to him to wear. It's an attack. He didn't even know where he was. He would say, ah, no. This cannot happen to me. It's not my lot. Yes. But the Bible says, watch and pray. 18. Stubborn blockage of progress. You can see the progress ahead of you. All of a sudden, they move in and fence you out. 19. Abandoned projects. Abandoned projects. It's evidence that there is an attack from the heavens. 20. False religions. Stubborn affinity to wrong religions. There are some people now, when the enemies are programmed problem against their lives in the heavens. Anytime a pastor is rebelling from one church to go and form his church, they will be the one who will follow them. When another one splits from that place to go away, he follows that one too. It's a program against the person. And 21, 
stubborn resistance to the gospel. Practically, in most families, there are some people who don't even want to hear the name of Christ. They don't want to get born again. It's a program that takes place in the heaven. Beloved, if we believers necessarily would devote one month, I want to pray about prayers on the heavenlies. What you will begin to experience is this. Witches will be flying. They will drop. They won't be able to fly. And you physically see them. You just get to somewhere. You find someone bringing out all his fetish power and throwing them away because they have disgraced him. If you pray prayers about the heavenlies, woe befalls any native doctor who is conjuring using your name because you have taken the battle above him now. And at that realm, they really can't contest with you. We, as the redeemed of the Lord, taught by the blood of Jesus, we have the mandate and the authority to speak words into the heavenlies. We have the mandate and the authority to exercise the power of God upon those bodies. Beyond the power to confront magicians, confront sorcerers, confront witchcraft, God has delegated the redeemed to determine what happens in the heavenlies above. So legally, as joint heirs of the kingdom of God, we have a right to tell those elements not to obey the voice of the enemy, but to obey our own voice. But if we keep quiet and we do none of these things, they will take over the heavenlies. How do we pray this kind of prayer? Number one is you must understand that God can use the words of your own mouth to control the heavens and the elements. Develop that confidence to start with. Number two, we need to break every covenant between all these sorcerers, enchanters, and magicians, thereby terminating their contacts with the heavenlies. Number three thing that we can do, that we can use the blood of Jesus to wipe out all the evil and writing and ordinances they have written in the heavenlies. Because they are always writing things in the heavenlies against people. I know a former leader in this country. He had his power hidden in the heavenlies. The time his enemies wanted to remove him. That's why they went. And they asked those people to remove it. They dismantled the things from the heavenlies. And the man fell. Four. We must retrench every satanic priest that walks with the heavenlies. By commanding their diviners to become mad and to lose their authority. The fifth thing we can do is to pray and retrieve all the properties that have been dedicated to the heavenlies. We'll, we'll take it out of their hands. The sixth way we pray is to give a counter order to the heavenlies that they should not respond to the programming of satanic agents. That is everything they say about you there. Heavenlies should not take the instruction. The seventh way you can pray is to deprogram anything they have planted against your life in the heavenlies. Deprogram it. And then the last way we can pray is to program the will of God and purposes of God into the heavenlies. And command that heavenly that you must always declare the glory of God over this land and over the people. These are serious matters. There are many, many useful men and women who have been rendered useless by evil visitors to the heavenlies. There are many who should be flying now. Somebody tried juju against them, it didn't work. He tried candle prayer against them, it didn't work. He tried to padlock them or program them into serpent like we saw some time ago in the newspaper, it didn't work. He now contacted the heavenlies. The real wicked people they are not those people you see on the street on the market this they hang juju on their neck had calabash on the neck hold horn in their hand those ones are small boys the real wicked ones they don't put anything on they have already swallowed their altars and they just contact the wickedness in the heaven the children of the devil have mastered so many things and hijacked so many things from us we now need to start a process of collecting our benefits back from where it was stored one time like this, when I was still a lecturer in College of Medicine, University of Lagos, there's a place at the back of Luth where a man sells pigs. We saw one film show one day. It challenged me. 
I think a young man, the man who must be around 23, 24, he bought a pig. But he didn't take the pig away. He said he was coming back to collect it. By the time he came there next day, and said, Baba, where is my pig? And the Baba said, no. Sorry. The pig you bought yesterday, which you paid for, died. Therefore, that's it. Unless you want to buy another one. I said, but I didn't remove you from here. Can I have another one? The man said, no. You selected that you that was in that corner. is dead. The young man said, can I have another one? This Baba said, well, if you don't disappear from here now, I will whip you with fetish power and I will spoil your life. Of, of course, you know negotiations. Anytime two cocks are fighting, they gather. Already, a crowd had gathered and they were advancing the young man. Leave this old man. Don't let him hurt you. But this young man just stood there. And said, I insist on having my pig. So the old man ran inside. This man must be close to 70. The Rajim brought out his juju and began incantation on the young man. Blah, 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 blah. He's talk, 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 talk. And as he was about to pronounce something on the young man, the man said, hold on. He said, that one you read is primary one. So now, now let me read to you primary 13. And he started. When the old man heard what he was saying, he ran inside and brought two pigs. He said, take, take, go. Here are children of the devil practicing their demonic power on each other. Here was a young man that looks you know, innocent. He, had no, he was not carrying anything. But it was a wicked entity moving about on the streets. There are plenty of them around us. If not, why should a man capture a fellow man and you kidnap the person and you are burying the person alive because you want money? You are calling his spirit out to go and fetch money for you. We need to pray. The prayers of this morning, they are not the kind of prayers we should just shake our heads. This may be the only opportunity you have to pray it. And you may not hear this kind of message again. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. There are many of us here today that things have been programmed against us. We need to deprogram them. To many, the enemy has programmed something against marriage. It has programmed something against uh, business. It has programmed something against progress. We need to deprogram these things. Enemy has programmed something to the evilness against some people and says, forever you will not get into a higher institution, let alone getting a degree. So no matter how intelligent they are, since the thing has been programmed into the evilness, they, they are not going anywhere, no matter where they travel to. Many of those students who went into the university and become cult members, it's because things have been programmed against their destiny to destroy them, to waste their life. It's not an ordinary thing. All eyes closed. If you are here this morning and you are not born again, you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, don't bother to pray these prayers. Don't waste your time. You need to surrender your life to Jesus first before you can pray them. So if you are here this morning and say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Right there where you are, just raise up your right hand and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you say that short prayer with me, immediately we close. Now, don't rush him. Just find a way to the altar here. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, louder than anyone here, say this after me loud and clear. My Father, you are the one who created times and seasons. And you put me here to operate. I thank you, Father, for bringing me here today. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I recover my destiny. From the arms of the wicked. Father, as David cried unto you, so do I cry today. That Father, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from my wicked enemies. 
You will not shout this loud and clear. Oh God, our Lord, and rescue my destiny from the hands of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. No party casenda. Ribosapende kaya boshente. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise your right hand up again. Say in the name of Jesus. I deprogram. Whatever the enemy has programmed into the sun. Into the moon. Into the stars. Concerning my life. I destroy. Every evil. That has been programmed against me. In the heavenlies. In the name of Jesus. Every enchantment, every evil pronouncement that have been made against me into the atmosphere, I nullify them by fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Now, these seven prayers, immediately we begin to pray them. Let me tell you what will begin to happen. There are some sisters here. Immediately we start praying now. All of a sudden, you feel as if somebody poured cold water on you. What is going to happen is this. The Lord will reduce your age so that what they say is not possible for you will become possible. As we start praying now, those who have been blinded by witchcraft powers, all of a sudden you will feel a hand pushing new eyes into your eyeball. As you pray these prayers, if somewhere, somewhere a meeting has been held and an evil decision has already been taken against you, this prayer will reverse the evil verdict. As you pray this prayer too, any organ in the body swallowed by witchcraft will be instantly vomited. Seven prayers now. Get yourself ready. You will shout this louder than anyone here. Every altar of darkness raised against me in the heavenlies. Shout it loud and clear. My support Make it louder than that, beloved. Die! In the name of Jesus, kill the altar of darkness. In the name of Jesus. Continue, continue, continue. Yes, every altar of darkness raised against you, the evil is. Die! Yes! That is the power of God. That is the power of God. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> I told you what to begin to happen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. As you pray this next prayer, some people are here this morning and your father is a native doctor or your mother was a marine priestess. Pray this prayer with boiling anger. Because automatically things have been programmed against your life in the heavenlies. Everybody will shout this louder than anyone close to them. This is number two. Every problem. Program it to my life. From the heavenlies. In the name of Jesus. The problems program from the heavens. Continue, continue. Look at what is happening to you. Continue, continue. Aha! Don't negotiate. Today is not a day to negotiate. 
Masikaya Boshendera Bosonto. Aha, 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 aha. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is number three. Blood of Jesus! Wipe out the handwriting of darkness assigned against me in the heavens. In the name of Jesus, let his blood wipe them out. Yes, 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 yes. Today is today. Enough is enough. Battle the powers. In Jesus' name we pray. Every arrow fired against me from the heavenly backfire. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Masikaya Boshenteraba. In Jesus' name we pray. Every diviner assigned against me from the heavens. Can I hear everybody saying this with only anger? Run mad in the name of Jesus. Bible says he make their diviners mad. Their diviners must be made mad. And their talkings must be frustrated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Must be made mad. And their talkings must be frustrated. It must be frustrated. It must be frustrated. Yes. In Jesus name we pray. Every satanic priest ministering against me from the heavens scatter in the name of Jesus scatter the priesthood in the name of Jesus yes 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 in Jesus name we pray the spirit of paralysis is being shaken out of somebody's life aha clinical prophecy given on the organ of the body of somebody has been cancelled aha the sun and the moon they can bring trouble they can also bring blessings so this last prayer point is double barrel the sun will not smite me by day not the moon by night the sun will bring me blessings the moon will bring me breakthroughs can i hear you say this once say it again Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Raise up your right hand to the heavens again and say what I'm going to say after me. Say, so I command you, heavens, not to give any reply to the programming of satanic agents against my life. I program the will and purposes of God into the heavens now. And I command the heavens to declare the glory of God over my life. I deliver every department of my life 
from the control of powers of the heavenlies by the anointing of the Holy Ghost I break the power of astrologers over my life I cancel every satanic prediction against my life in the name of Jesus Father in your name I command a change into my situation now Father in the name of Jesus I command a change into my situation now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Daniel hear the word of the Lord as from today you shall move forward by fire in the name of Jesus as from today I shall no longer be cited as negative example in the name of Jesus point both hands to the heavenlies now I begin to say this I possess the key of wealth from the heavenlies by the power in the blood of Jesus begin to decrease possessed the key to the heavens to possess your possession in Jesus name we pray let that be silent so many things are happening here this morning a lot of people have been tied down to one spot the chain is broken yes the powers that have assembled to love you to scorn. The same powers shall assemble to rejoice with you. The powers that are mocking your prayers as from today they shall mock no more. Thank you Jesus. Now if you are in this meeting and there's a situation that you have been stubbornly battling with and is resisting your prayers and mocking your efforts. This final prayer we want to pray. The Lord said, the louder you pray it, the faster your breakthrough. Elijah had a key in his hand. The key to the heavens. Before he went to battle the prophets of Baal, he had locked them up before he got there. Because the prophets of Baal didn't know they were locked up. If they had known, they would not have bothered to pray or cry to the idols. But they cried out. And if that idol, Baal, didn't used to answer them in the past, they would not bother crying. So they knew Baal used to answer. But that particular day, somebody sent Baal on holiday. Not only that, he mocked them. So shall you mock your enemies in Jesus. You will now shout this louder than anyone here. Every problem, Every problem assigned against me from the heavens in order to kill me. Can I hear you saying this loud and clear? When I say kill, it didn't mean the person will physically die. You. But if you are moving about and you are not fulfilling your destiny, you are as good as dead. If you are supposed to be a millionaire so that you can help others, but you yourself, you are poor, then it's like a dead person. If you are supposed to be an automobile engineer so that God will use you to bring you out new things, but right there where you are now, you are working in a bank, a dead. That's why I say your strongest enemy, one that does not want you to fulfill your God. Giving destiny. 
Can you shout the prayer again loud and clear? Every prayer. Your time is up. Time. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. In Jesus name we pray. If you are that person here, and a long time ago you wanted to do certain things and somebody asked you to sleep with a corpse. If you are that person, you better find a way very quickly to this altar now. So that that yoke of the enemy upon your life can be broken. Jesus brought you here today to save you completely. It's because of you I stopped that prayer for a little bit. Can you shout it again loud and clear? In the name of Jesus. Masataka the Karibo Center. Karibo Kosoponde Kayabo Center Abakaraba. In Jesus' name we pray. There is still one man who is supposed to join them here at the altar. Don't allow the enemy to cage you to your seat because you are shy or because you are ashamed. That man is here. You know what you have done. Every problem assigned against my life from the heavens in order to kill me. In the name of Jesus, Masikaya bo shentera bo kola basanta, ribo soponde kaya bo shentera bakala ba. Yes, when I be released of the power of God to break every yoke, to break every yoke, to break every yoke, to break every yoke. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at the front here, begin to breathe in and out aggressively. Breathe in and out aggressively. Certain things have to come out of your life right there where you are. It has been there for years, tormenting your destiny. Do it aggressively. Yes, there is the power of God coming upon you now. Lord, I'm praying for this, your children. That every contract covenant with the grave and every covenant and contract with the dead that has kept them in one spot, let them be set free now in the name of Jesus. Be set free, 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 be set free. In the name of Jesus. As from today, your life takes a new turn for good. Blood of Jesus wipes up from the heavens. That which has been recorded against. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. A great bondage has been broken in your life this morning. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now grip your head with your two hands. Because when the sun begins to shine, that is the first place it will eat. And louder than anyone in this meeting today. Say the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. In the name of Jesus, the sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. We pray. Let us share the grace in fellowship.